Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas. I'm here today with the Multimatic 220 ACDC machine by Miller Electric. Uh, so today in this video we're going to go over some, uh, just to do an updated version of this 220. It's been a very popular machine. Uh, we've been selling quite a few of these things and, and we've gotten a lot of good feedback, but we've also gotten a lot of good questions too. So we're going to try and answer some of those questions today. So this unit here, I've had for a while, um, it is a dual cylinder cart unit. So that's one of the things I wanted to talk about was if you have a 220 and you have a single cart, you can buy the dual cylinder cart kit. So it comes in a kit, um, it replaces the rear end of your current cart, and then it gives you a dual cylinder cart uh, or mount up top, two chains, uh, two hangers, so you can hang uh, your leads and stuff on there. But it, mainly it changes the rear carriage, so you put two cylinders there. So that, that way you can run pure argon and then your 7525 or your 9010 mix or your straight CO2 gas for the MIG welding portion. Um, our cart here, we've had it at a few trade shows. It's actually, it's very nice. I like, we like to keep our stuff on the carts down below, but just to show you guys how it is, it's pretty simple to put together. Um, and the whole package, if you just buy the whole dual cylinder kit 220, it comes um, all on one pallet basically and then you just put everything together uh, very simple, but the additional part, we'll link all this down below, but everything to, to upgrade it is it's very simple to do. Um, so going around to the side here, we'll pop open this panel. I got, we're going to MIG weld today with this. I got some 030 Hobart wire um, just to show it run back through. So on the Real Nice by Miller, they come out with all these parameter settings. So steel wire and then you got MIG or flux cord. Aluminum wire welding, so you can put a spool gun on this unit. And then TIG welding parameters, and remember this one will do AC for aluminum and DC electronegative. And then it also stick welds. Um, and it gives you some good electrode types to use and what amperage um, and voltage or you know to run on your on everything on the settings there. And remember this one does 120 volt or 240 volt. So it's got a swap out plug. Right now I got it hooked up to uh, 240, but my little 110 plug adapter here, if I can get it out of there, is stuck in uh, right there. So remember that just uh, the back end on threads, and then that goes on there, and you can run this on 110 volt as well. I also stuck in there because I had my two pound spool is my 11 pound spool adapter. It, and remember that just you undo that nut spring and washer and that goes back on there then you can put your 11 pound spool on there. I just set it down below with the dual cylinder cart. Nice storage underneath and some good storage inside. We usually keep our contact tips nozzle stuff inside but then when we got the dual cylinder cart we ended up on the front end of the cart it has a consumable tray. So you just slide your consumable kit that comes with that in there fits perfectly and that way it's right underneath the welder so you don't lose it. Um, obviously this cart it sits up, I got it jacked up off the ground but I mean it sits stance wise pretty good off the ground. Um, very mobile, very, it is a pretty nice cart. Um, so if you're looking for that option check it out, we'll link that down below. So one of the beauties, I'll flip this thing on, as you guys know the Multimag 220 here, it has auto set and then it does, it's basically a three in one, right? We got flux core, MIG stainless, MIG steel, 7525, 100% CO2. We got MIG aluminum with a spool gun. We got TIG aluminum, TIG steel stainless, and then stick. So we got the best of everything all packaged into one unit. Um, and we've had a lot of good success with these. Um, we've had them in a educational settings um, and they hold up fairly well. They, they get a lot of abuse in those educational settings, but as far as a home hobby or garage kind of guy, we get a lot of feedback from those people. Um, a lot of race car guys and just tractor guys and stuff. They like this because they can bounce back and forth between aluminum and steel and they don't really have to do much. So as you can see my setup here, I got it set up basically for aluminum and steel. And all you got to do, so right now it says we're on MIG steel. And then I got my wireless foot pedal, and we'll attach this down below too, but this is an option, does not come with it, comes with a wired. But if I hit that, it goes right, flips right over to TIG. So basically I could have my TIG torch on my table, and then my MIG gun on my table, and just flip-flop between the two, 
and then I'll show you this. Hit the trigger, it goes right back to the MIG, MIG welding. So pretty awesome that it can do that. So it talks to one another, and then obviously we got a, uh, we go back to that, and it flip flops right back. So awesome, I can leave everything hooked up, my ground hooked up, my TIG torch hooked up. The only thing that I gotta change is when I go to stick weld with this. So we gotta unplug the TIG torch and put my stick electrode holder in. Not a big deal, basically just a quarter turn, and that comes right out. And then just loop that around, and then I can have my stinger pop it in. Now that one you're gonna have to manually change though, and put, and change it to stick welding, because it's not gonna recognize, there's no remote to tell it, hey, we're gonna do some stick welding. So right now, and I'll go over some features on the front end of this unit. So to toggle through everything, we'll start right at the top. So flux cord, no gas. So this will do self-shielded. Tells you what polarities to set, remember, because you gotta go electronegative on uh, the self-shielded flux cord wire. So then we got our wire size, our auto set is on. We can shut that off and just go right straight manual mode, or we can turn it on, and then it gives us a target setting and we tell it our wire size and we can increase that and we can run up to 045 on our inner sh or our self shielded wire and then we can increase our material thickness as well up to a quarter inch but then it gives us a target setting now those target settings can be changed but it's just saying that's what's predetermined in the machine so if i have an 035 self shielded on quarter inch it's going to give me 22 volts and it's pretty close but you can you can adjust it from there but we'll go down here MIG stainless steel recommends a Trimix. And there's a couple other blends of gas you could run. But you can ask your local uh, gas distri distribution and see what they recommend. There again, gives you some good parameters to start out with depending on what wire size you got. We got MIG steel 70, C70, C25, which is a 7525 mix. That's what we're going to run today. I got 030 wire in there. I'll just show you here. We'll turn on auto set. 030, we got some eighth inch material. So it's giving us 17.7 and 304 inches a minute. We'll give that a shot and see how it works. Um, we'll just keep on scrolling here. Straight 100% CO2. A lot of people like to do that because the gas is, um, it works well. It's just, it's a little bit less expensive, I want to say. And so the, the gas, but there's a lot more spatter with that gas. But it gives you some parameters. And you'll notice... It was 17.7 on the C25, and now it's 18.2. So you need more voltage and more wire feed speed when you run 100% CO2 because of, of the nature of the CO2 gas. Um, they like you need more voltage to acquire the same achievement as you would with 75.25. If that makes sense. Make aluminum. Got a spool mate, um, so you can do the 100 or the 150 in this unit. And that's an option. We'll link that all down below. And this will run the 5000 and 4000 series. So I'll toggle down and you can see the 4000 series. Now remember, the 100 only runs 4000 series and then the 150 will run 4000 or 5000 series aluminum. And same thing, you can change from auto set or you can just go straight manual again and then it'll know. So if you have your spool gun hooked up, you would need to unplug your MIG gun to run that spool gun because it plugs right in where the MIG gun is. TIG aluminum, one of my favorite things to do and this machine runs it fairly well. I, I really, I do enjoy the, the AC output on this and for what it is and the package that you get, man, it really does weld very nice. Um, so you just change your tungsten size, right, on auto set or your material thickness. Um, it comes standard with 332nd tungsten in your TIG torch. Uh, but if you want to run some smaller tungsten, you can swap that out. It can't, comes with a little kit, too, for your TIG torch. Um, but very nice thing. Now, remember, we got high frequency, so we got a high freak start. If you want to do lift arc, you just where you touch off, but you still got to use the foot pedal. Or if you want to do no remote and just straight up lift arc, you can toggle down and do that. We'll go over to TIG steel and stainless steel. There, again, it gives you good auto set settings for that. And then... You, we're on high freak start. Um, this thing TIG welds very well. I, I, I will say it does MIG welding and TIG welding very well. And the last thing, uh, stick. It does stick uh, fairly good. It's not a, I'll tell you this, so it doesn't run 6010, uh, but 6011, 6013, you can run those all day. 7018, it runs it very well, but it will not run 6010. That's a big question that we get. And everybody always asks, well, why, why, why not? 
It's because, so the open circuit vo voltage across those two studs is, is low. And it's, it's a safety thing, and so they lower the open circuit voltage. And to run 6010, you need, you need a high open circuit voltage to run 6010. So this machine does not have that, it will not run 6010. Um, so don't be disappointed when you buy it. And you didn't watch my video to tell you that it won't run 6010, I can promise you that. Um, it, it'll, it'll arc, but it won't run it. So other than that, it stick welds fairly well. I, I, I don't mind the stick welding I'll put on it, but I think it does take better, and I think it does make better than stick. But it's just, you know, it's a three-in-one, so it's an option that you have. Um, most people that I see buying these, they have them set up just like this, and the stick welding lead is thrown in the box in their attic somewhere because they're only TIG welding aluminum with them, or they're MIG welding small things, you know, quick fit up stuff. It's pretty cool. So let, let's toggle back up to, like, I'll just hit the trigger. And it goes right to my C70, C25, so 7525 gas, my auto set, all set up. We'll give this thing a shot to TIG weld. Um, now, just to kind of go over on the foot pedal, this thing comes with a wired version. But you can get this wireless unit, very nice. Um, we'll attach it down below. The price point on these is uh, is up there, but it's very handy. No cord, you're not no tripping hazard. You set it on the floor, and that way you got your two your tick torch, your main gun, and then you just got a wireless foot pedal. Um, but it does come with a wired foot pedal, so we just have our wireless hooked up today. We'll, uh, we'll grab a hood here, and we'll give it a shot on welding. All right, so. Got my mid gun stretched out here, ground clamp connected. This is an MDX 100 gun, so this is newer to uh, the Miller lineup. Uh, they're pretty nice guns. I, I like the little uh, ball joint at the end, gives it a good dexterity on your wrist. But let's give it a shot. So I got that auto set, 030 wire, 8 inch material, and it's giving me 17.7 volts. Let's see how it welds. Pretty nice, pretty crisp, short arm there. I didn't touch anything from auto set, so 17, 17 volt. It ran great. I, I mean, that's that's pretty pretty well tuned in right there for O3O wire. Um, I, I like that. That well is pretty nice. So one of the questions that we get to people buy these and they they want to run them on some portable generator or something like that, which you can do, um, but I would recommend. A higher wattage generator, so probably 8,500 watts and above. Um, if you have something bigger than that, that's even better. But it will run off 220 on your generator, and it will run off 110 on that generator too. You just need a good, um, probably a 20 amp circuit breaker on that 110 output on that generator. But they will run off a generator, and then a lot of people like to run them too. But we've seen they buy this, they buy the spool gun, they stretch that spool gun out, and then they run aluminum off a generator and then they also have the tick capability as well so they're kind of a lot of people that are buying these they're, they're kind of wrapping them all up and then and they're doing some portable welding and um, it's very cool stuff we get a lot of good feedback and they uh, we like to hear from everybody so if you got any questions or comments please leave them down below we'll do our best to answer them and thanks again for watching and stay tuned for some more